Greetings, loyal subjects. This is Jane Boleyn, Lady Rochford. At least it could be. It's labelled up as such. It's a drawing by Hans Holbein. However, Holbein has a certain history of incorrectly labelling some of these initial drawings, or somebody labelled them up incorrectly for Hans Holbein. One thing is for sure, Jane Boleyn was one of the most significant peripheral figures in my royal court. She's often depicted as a scheming, vindictive woman. However, is that actually the case? Or was she really one of the most tragic figures at the Tudor court? She was born Jane Parker. She was minor aristocracy. She was the daughter of the 10th Baron Morley. She was actually distantly related to me. Unlike most minor aristocrats of the time, we have absolutely no idea of the year of her birth. It's often estimated to be the year 1505. She joined the royal court at some point. Again, we don't really know when. Probably in her teenage years. One thing is for certain. She was present at the Field of the Cloth of Gold. The famous summit where I met the King of France and we wrestled and he cheated. You know the story about that. It's also possible she could have also appeared in the famous mask in 1522 alongside Anne and Mary Boleyn for the Venetian ambassadors, said to be the time that I actually first cast my eyes on Anne Boleyn. She then married George, the brother of Mary and Anne. Again, an exact date cannot be confirmed. Probably 1524 or 1525. This was well before my marriage to Anne Boleyn. And being a generous sort, I granted the couple a wedding gift of a mansion in the county of Norfolk. Of course, the Boleyns climbed the greasy pole as I had a relationship first with Mary. And then once I discarded her, I moved on to her sister Anne. As we know, it took a long time for me to get my divorce from Catherine of Aragon in order to marry Anne. But as that neared its conclusion, the Boleyns became more and more elevated in favour. Thomas Boleyn, Anne's father, was granted the title Earl of Wiltshire. And one of his minor titles was then used for George. He was called... Viscount Rochford, and as is custom, his wife, Jane Boleyn, then became Lady Rochford by marriage. And it's often Lady Rochford that Jane Boleyn is referred to as. Now, there are many doubts about the happiness of the Boleyn's marriage. Some say that George was a terrible womanizer, and this is what caused the misery. Others suggest that George was in fact homosexual, and he had no interest in Jane whatsoever. But it's certainly something that modern day fiction writers have picked up upon, and they've played upon it in novels and TV adaptations. What the truth is, we don't really know. However, it's probably the case that Lady Rochford betrayed her husband and her sister-in-law. She is thought to have provided evidence that both George and Anne slept together. Now, she wasn't called at the trial. However, the writings of George Wyatt, some years later, it has to be said, stated that Lady Rochford was a wicked wife the accuser of her own husband, even to seeking his own blood. Now, if we are 100% certain or not that Lady Rochford did betray George, we, we aren't certain, in all honesty. However, the likelihood is that she probably did in some way, shape or form. After the downfall of the Boleyns, she ended up having to beg Thomas Cromwell for money. Cromwell interceded with her father-in-law 
and ensure that she received a decent annual allowance of £100 a year. He was also probably highly influential in getting her back to court. She became lady-in-waiting to Jane Seymour. Then, after Jane's death, she also joined the court of Anne of Cleves. But of course, the Anne of Cleves marriage did not last long, a mere six months. And then Jane Boleyn moved into her most famous role, I suppose, as lady-in-waiting to Catherine Howard. Now, for reasons best be known to her, she helped Catherine Howard with her secret meetings with Thomas Culpepper. Now, what actually happened during those clandestine meetings with young, handsome Thomas Culpepper, we'll never know. But we certainly know what Catherine Howard was accused of. And Jane Boleyn, Lady Rochford, was arrested along with her mistress. And she was sent to the Tower of London. There, she went mad. Literally insane. This presented me with a problem. Because the law did not allow for the trial and execution of people considered insane. So I did a very Henry VIII thing. I simply changed the law to allow for the execution of insane people. And she was condemned to die by act of attainer. So in other words, there was no trial. It was just basically said that she would be executed. And on the morning of the 13th of February, 1542, Lady Rochford was executed on Tower Green immediately after her mistress, Catherine Howard. 